So currently, two of Marvel's most popular heroes, or anti-heroes depending on how you want to look at it, will come head to head and team up, maybe even face off against each other in this new comic series. Now my name is AJ here at The Hero Informer and let's get into it. Alright, so we immediately pick up and see Wolverine in the midst of a city jumping rooftop from rooftop as he explains some of the problems within his now current life. You see, even though Wolverine is technically a hero and mostly associates with either the X-Men, Avengers and other teams like that, he still is at heart a trained killer. So when someone needs to be taken care of, Wolverine is one of the people you call to get it done effectively. As he even says that he has a phone, it's not a fancy one with screens, a flip phone and the best part about it is is, it never rings, except when it does, it means someone needs to be hurt badly. And as that famous Wolverine quote goes, he's the best at what he does. And as we see here, Wolverine is really needed for the job, as this particular villain and case is brutal, with the comic even going on to say, the villain leaves their victims in such a state that even leaves seasoned heroes and the authorities lose their lunch. But as soon as Logan cracks his neck, getting ready to intervene and look for him, suddenly there's a giant reckless explosion behind him. And this is none other than Deadpool himself, who arrived on the scene even earlier than Wolverine did, fighting the villain. But of course, way more recklessly, as Deadpool really doesn't care for damage or casualties too much. And even Wolverine's reaction itself tells you how he feels about Deadpool here. And with that, Wolverine immediately lunges and stabs him inside the back, giving Deadpool a second to catch his stride and quip a little bit. But now that the two heroes are here, they are forced to team up to take down this dangerous villain. But it seems this villain's unique power set even gives troubles to Deadpool's guns and weapons and Wolverine's claws. As the villain continues to spat out incoherent nonsense, as he is pretty much insane, he does manage to knock the two heroes back into a corner. As they proceed to talk for a second, with Deadpool theorizing that the villain's powers work by absorbing energy and turning it into physical strength. But of course, Wolverine doesn't care and telling him just to leave, he has this himself, as he runs in back in the battle before Deadpool shooting his leg from behind to get the upper hand and rush in front of him. As right now these two heroes are forced to team up right now to take down the big bad, but at the same time they are really no team, and do not mesh well together or fight well together, as they keep getting in each other's way, with Wolverine even using this to his advantage, baiting one of the villain's energy tentacles to attack Wade instead, literally slicing his top shoulder in half, and as Deadpool is down and the bait was took, Wolverine tries to rush in, telling Deadpool to stay out of his way. Way. But even still, unfortunately, he just gets grabbed, and at this time is forced to be saved by Deadpool, who his arm is now fully healed up thanks to his and Wolverine's healing factor. But even still, as Deadpool jumps on Wolverine's shoulders, shooting the villain point blank with his guns, it seems that the villain's tech and abilities are stronger as there is no effect. As Deadpool starts to quip even more, which just further irritates Wolverine with him telling him to shut up, but just then the villain does something very reckless. He sees that he can't fully take down Wolverine and Deadpool, so he changes his target. As he then jumps down from the roof Thrawn, towards the civilians down below. But of course, Deadpool is more worried about the bounty than the innocent lives that could be lost from the villain. And as the villain is making his way down, falling, the comic goes on to say, most normal people never see a monster in real life. And when they do, it just doesn't compute. They think they're looking at a broken person who needs help, and I, Wolverine, envy them. Because hunters know a monster is just a wounded animal, the most dangerous kind. And for them, there is only one fix to that, to put them down. As we see Wolverine and Deadpool jump too, before the villain can even make it to the civilians down below, literally cutting him in half. Wolverine using his adamantium claws, and Deadpool using his sword, as the villain is literally cut into pieces, hitting the ground down below. As do Wolverine and Deadpool, but their healing factors will have them covered. Moving over later, we pick up with Wolverine and Deadpool together now, sitting upon a rooftop, looking over the paramedics as they take the villain's body, and they begin to talk, with Deadpool inviting Wolverine for drinks at his new place he scored above somewhere, and it smells of diabetes and desperation, which is a very specific clue that you should remember for later. But anyways, Wolverine just quickly responds, go count your money, in a rude tone, with Deadpool even taking note of this saying, you sound angry, we just capped a serial killing POS, we weren't gonna save a guy like that. Sometimes broken is just broken, and even the same could be said about us. Well, me, not you. Not anymore, at least. From mutant outcast, to manipulated monster, to beloved X-Man. Basically going on to say how Wolverine himself, even though he started as a mass killing machine, he has molded himself and changed into a beloved hero, whereas Deadpool is kinda still in the middle, and not as righteous or good as he perceives Wolverine to be. With this even confusing Wolverine himself with this cryptic message, Deadpool says nothing, just talking. Smell you later, Wolvie. As he jumps down from the roof they were on, and they begin to depart. But again, this is just the beginning, as we see something really shocking and interesting later on. Cutting over to an unidentified amount of time later, we see Wolverine at a pub trying to drink away the last days and missions sorrow. But he even goes on to say how he tries, but it never works. The literal definition of insanity 
trying the same thing over and over, expecting new and different results. And with that, Wolverine decides to try something new. Remember the safe house that Deadpool gave him an invitation to get some drinks? Well, he decides to go looking for it. With him moving over and the comic even going on to say, I am supposed to be on a plane. The monster is dead, so the monster's killer can rightly screw off. But the killer that they took care of was new to the powers game. Maybe he was already insane before, or maybe the powers ate his brain even more. Regardless though, someone's making monsters. And I think the idiot, Deadpool, knows who. As he reaches the safe house Deadpool is talking about, using his keen senses, sniffs around, and finds a burner phone. And as you know burner phones are supposed to be used, then broken or trashed, this one is unburned. And it is not just some lucky break, it is a clue. It was left intentionally for Wolverine to find, by Deadpool himself. And why is Deadpool leaving clues for Wolverine to find and chase his trail? Well we will see very shortly. Where the comic then jumps over and we pick up in Russia, with Wolverine going on to say that his tech pals traced the last call that the burner phone made to Siberia. But still, Siberia is a very big place to find where Deadpool is and what he is planning. But it seems, again, Wolverine had another lucky break. As after scanning private flights from Vancouver to here, there was a booking by one person named Sonia W. Lude. And if you scramble it, it spells out Wade Wilson. Just going on to show you that either Deadpool did this all himself, or he had help by some very powerful and influential people. As Wolverine continues to walk into the estate or hotel, and see it's completely Deadpoolified, with Deadpool statues and other merch scattered all throughout. With Wolverine even going on to say, I'm not sure I have hated anyone as much as I hate this man right now, and I carry some pretty deep hate. And just then, we see multiple trained soldiers bust through the window, screaming no witnesses. And these soldiers seem to have some advanced technology, the same tech that the one villain from earlier did. And at their arrival, Wolverine starts to do what Wolverine does best. Because at heart, he is a trained killer. And especially with these soldiers trying to kill Wolverine, he even notes that this is not a capture mission, so he has no reason to hold back. As he literally gets shot from every angle, blood spewing everywhere with holes pouring out of him. With him going on to say, pain is a powerful motivator. Sometimes it is the only one that'll work on a person but Wolverine cannot afford the luxury of giving over to pain. And that's how his monster comes out, his berserker state. But in spite of how he looks and sometimes acts, he doesn't really want to be that monster though. As he finally and unsurprisingly is able to take down every soldier, with the only living being left in that mansion being one old man. As he comes through the door clapping, saying your performance exceeded expectations, meaning whatever is going on and whoever is orchestrating this whole thing in cahoots with Deadpool, they are using this entire thing for some kind of entertainment of some sort, with Wolverine even going on to say why. What game is Deadpool playing? Before getting a note card from the person, before Wolverine takes him out and kills him. So Wolverine then heads on his motorcycle to the address that was on the card that he got from the old man. And upon arriving there, he sees a giant gate filled with strobe lights and an audience. As they finally say, he has arrived, the one and only, the Wolverine. And no, this doesn't seem like some league of supervillains of some kind, these look like normal Russian people. As Wolverine walks through the crowd, they seem to know who he is and even excited to see him here, as they are expecting a show. And as Wolverine finally makes his way through the red carpet, he peeks through the curtains and sees something that blows his mind. He sees a modified Deadpool. Using the same tech that the guy from earlier that him and Deadpool had to team up to defeat and kill, now on Deadpool. As the comic and villain narrates, Deadpool chose courage. He chose to be better. He allowed me to help him evolve beyond the constraints of his considerable but limiting form. As this new Deadpool starts to activate, literally popping his own claws and stabbing Wolverine through the stomach. With the narrator going on to say his chosen name is Wade Wilson III. And that his last words before being sedated and turned into what he is now, third time's the charm. And what does this mean? Well, if you remember earlier when he was talking to Deadpool on the rooftop, he noted how Wolverine went from a mutant outcast to a manipulated monster to now a beloved X-Men. And now Deadpool thinks it's time for his third revival or third metamorphosis to change into being something better. But of course, in Deadpool fashion, he goes about it in the completely wrong way, turning himself into another monster once again. And so Deadpool and Wolverine start their little battle, with Wolverine fighting this new and improved Deadpool. Blood being splattered everywhere as these two beings with healing factors tear each other apart, as the audience do nothing but clap and watch, clearly enjoying this brutal bloodshed. But suddenly as they charge one more time towards each other, the floor gives out and they are sent falling through down the icy tundra, as Wolverine and this new Deadpool go to continue their battle, but leaving this issue on a cliffhanger as it comes to a close. Yeah, what did you guys think about this story? Now, yeah, this is only issue one, 
but I guess it sets up some pretty interesting themes with Deadpool trying to get his own new change in metamorphosis to becoming something better. But for now, he's nothing more than a pawn in whoever or whatever institution is controlling him. As always though, leave a like or even subscribe if you're new and enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching.